Hi, my name is Graham Fennell and I'm here to talk to you about the scientific methods and engineering design process. We're going to discuss the differences between the two and how they can be implemented into a classroom. A lot of you understand the scientific method and have seen it a lot in elementary or middle school math classes or science classes. So we're going to start there and move into the engineering design process. The so first thing you do in the scientific method is you're going to ask a question. The kind of simple base layer um, before you do anything else. Um, after that, you're going to go and do some background research into your question, just so you have a kind of firm foundation before you start anything else in the method. Um, after that, you can go to the uh, form a hypothesis. So what this is going to look like is, based on the research that you have so far about your question, you're going to go and form a hypothesis, form a statement about the problem. Um, uh, and then from there, you're going to go and test your hypothesis uh, with um, test with uh, an experiment. So through that, you're going to test it, figure out if it's true or false, and in the next session, to analyze data and draw a conclusion, you're going to go and figure out how your hypothesis played out to be. Um, how did your test do? Did you have to go back and redo your test, your, redo your experiment, um, or did you have to um, go back and be formed of a hypothesis? Um, if your hypothesis was correct, you should go and be able to redo it and recreate it. Um, but after all that conclusion and analyze, you can go and communicate your results um, to uh, people around. So that's the kind of basic scientific method. Next is the engineering design process. So this one, just kind of scientific method, instead of asking questions, you're going to just define a problem. So that's not too different, um, pretty much about the same. And the next step below, doing some background research, is about the same. Um, so you can do some more research about the problem so you have a better foundation before you go into anything else in the process. Um, what is different here is the next step, the criteria and constraints, which is right underneath the background research. Um, this is where uh, you kind of narrow your field of, for the problem. So here it's like your costs and benefits, uh, um, so costs, time, materials that you have, a bunch of different stuff that can um, kind of narrow your focus on the solution at hand. Um, so after that, you have your brainstorming possible solutions. So here you come up with the different ideas that may be solutions to the problem. Um, you do not know them uh, just yet. Um, but unlike the scientific method, is here you have multiple solutions that you can have. Um, then through that, you might test. Next step is test your solutions. You might test one at a time, test multiple of them. You might be building prototypes. Um, but you're going to go and test one of the solutions. So say if I test it, and then we're going to go down to analyze results. So you're going to um, look at your test, analyze what happened. Um, was your test correct? Was there problems with it? Was your prototype malfunctioning? Do you have to go and redo it? You might have to go back and redo uh, the test solutions part. Or you, that solution might not work at all. You might have to go back to the brainstorming possible solutions and kind of continue the cycle until you get one that works out. After that, you're going to analyze your results, um, making sure that they still line up with the criteria and constraints that you have. Um, make sure everything was okay, good, and just like the scientific method is, you should be able to recreate your results through this. Um, after that, you're going to go and communicate your results, um, and that's basically the rundown and entry and design process. Now, um, say um, we we'll show an example of one problem and put the two together um, and see the differences. So say if I walk into a room and the light won't turn on. Scientific method is, that's the question, I might do some more research um, some find the electrical wiring of the house or whatnot. For my hypothesis, I think the light bulb might be burned out. My experiment might be I might replace it with another light bulb and analyze the data. The light bulb turns on, that means the light, possible light bulb that we had before probably was burned out. If it doesn't turn on, then that means we might have a faulty circuit. Um, I might have to go back forward to the hypothesis, do another experiment. But after that, I can communicate my results and be done with it. Engineering design process find a problem, uh, the room, um, the light won't turn on or it is dark. Do some more background research, might do the same thing, background research about the electrical wiring of the house and stuff like that. Criteria and constraints. Um, how much money do I have um, to conduct a solution to this problem? Is it worth it? Another thing is how bright do I want the room to be? Um, so I might have possible solutions. I might open up a blind, I might replace light bulb, I might have a whole other light source added into the room. Um, test solutions. I might say we we'll test the light bulb again. 
Um, my solution is I think it's burned out, so I'm going to put in a new light bulb. I might test that solution, I might put the light bulb in, but I need to go back and make sure that it's still in line with the criterion constraints. Was it cost effective for me to replace the light bulb? Um, how bright is the room? Is it too bright or is it, is it not bright enough? Um, do, does it align with my criteria and my constraints? After that, I'm going to analyze the results. Um, it's kind of what I just did before. Um, figure out if it worked, if it didn't work, if not, how, where do I need to go back? Do I need to do the test or do I need to go and do a whole different solution after that? Um, and maybe another brainstorming idea. So after that, I'm going to commun communicate my results. Um, so there, there are, there's a big difference between the two. Um, and we're going to kind of go more into the engineering design process and how that looks more into like a math class. So say if I have a window on the side of my house, I don't know how tall it is or off the ground. So that's going to find my problem. I might do more research on the house. Is the wall 90 degrees to the walls, uh, to the ground, stuff like that. Retain restraints, money, costs, materials. What do I have that I can um, find a solution to this problem? Possible um, solutions. I might go and um, find an angle with the ground that goes up to the window, so maybe like 18 degrees or 20 degrees, and um, might use some trig functions to go and figure out the length or the height of that window. I might also get a ladder or some type of um, straight device that I can uh, lean up against the side of the house so it bottom of it touches the window and the ground and I might use some more um, trig or Pythagorean theorem to figure out the solution. But say the solution I pick is I'm going to put my back up against the wall and I'm going to pace out um, the distance until I get 45 degrees with my feet to the window, then I know that um, the distance I walk is the same distance um, vertical to the window just because of the special right triangle of the 45 degrees um, I saw solution right triangle. So I might do that, so, uh, I might do that, test the solution, analyze the results, and figure out if it um, worked out. Um, but that's, and I'm going to communicate my results. It's a basic rundown of the engine design process, scientific method, the difference between the two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was helped clarify some stuff for you. And um, have a great day.